Welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen video. Tom Odo of Goldspot Pens recently contacted me about reviewing a Goldspot Pens exclusive, a limited edition Caveco Sport Royal Amethyst. Goldspot will release the limited edition pen today and you can get yours before they sell out by clicking the link in the description below. He asked me if I'd like to review this pen and obviously I agreed because here it is. And none too soon. I only got it a couple of days ago, but I've spent the weekend writing, counting facets, and generally putting the classic Caveco Sport through its paces. So let's take a look at the limits of this limited edition right now. <laughs> So a short time ago, Tom Odo of Goldspot Pens, uh, you'd recognize him from the Goldspot videos. Uh, he's very informative. You should watch his YouTube channel. I know it's a commercial site, but just like Brian Goulet's YouTube channel, uh, Tom Odo's Goldspot Pens YouTube channel is very informative. And I watch it uh, quite a lot to see what's new and what's interesting. I'll link his YouTube channel in the description. Uh, but he told me that they were doing an exclusive uh, with Caveco, Goldspot Pen's exclusive Caveco Sport in an exclusive color. Uh, so he sent me one for review. This will be released on Tuesday. It's currently Thursday, so I have to do a very quick review and get this up and out the door. And he sent me a couple of things here. We have a Caveco sticker. And we have a Caveco pamphlet with some Caveco history in German and English. And he sent me a clip and the converter. These are actually sold separately uh, with the Caveco Sport. But let's take a look. I've got one Caveco Sport that was donated to me and to my channel by a viewer. And I've got some Caveco Sport lookalikes as well. But here is the new model Caveco Sport, which is exclusive to Goldspot Pens, and it is called Royal Amethyst. Let's get it out of the bag. And there we are. It's a lovely lilac purple color, translucent and it has gold spot badging on it. Caveco on one side, gold spot on the other. And there is the nib. I think this is a medium. Beautiful color. I'm going to my favorite stationer store, Reed Stationers in downtown Calgary, and I'm gonna pick up some lavender purple ink. And I'm not gonna say what it is until I know whether they have it in stock or not. And it's got one standard international Caveco cartridge right there. Let's put the Caveco converter in it. It's a push-pull converter. So I won't be using that cartridge. And let's put the clip on the pen because if you really want it, you got to put a ring on it. If you really, really, really want it. Oh, I wish I was Beyonce. And that makes for a beautiful pen. I'll show the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons and measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. To say the Caveco Sport is the flagship of the Caveco Pen Company is like saying Margot Robbie is pretty, obvious, and a staggering understatement. The Sport model is the brand. You don't agree? Well, then name some of the other models that Caveco makes. If you said Brickeo, it's just a long sport. But a sport isn't just a sport. There's the classic sport, the skyline sport, the frosted sport, the AL sport, the art sport, the brass sport, the steel sport, the bronze sport, the ebonite sport, the AC sport, and countless limited edition sports, of which the Gold Spot Pens Royal Amethyst Sport is the latest edition. That's a lot of sport. All right, well, if you got to get good at something really fast, there's only one way to do it. Come on! We're gonna need a montage. montage. A sports training montage. montage. In 1934, the Caveco Pen Company invented the octagon shape and introduced the Caveco Sport Set, comprised of a pocket sized fountain pen and a twist pencil in a leather pouch for sportsmen. The Sport Fountain Pen has remained relatively unchanged since then, with its octagonally faceted cap and pocket size. There's just a huge variety of materials used for the cap and body of this pen, 
from brass and copper to sterling silver and carbon fiber. And every year, like the Limey Safari, fans are treated to new colors, shades, and variations of shades, colors, and tints. The 2024 Quebeco color of the collectible year is the Apricot Pearl. The nice thing about collecting Quebeco sports is the price. They are eminently affordable at a retail price of around $30 US. So collecting isn't a huge financial commitment like collecting Mont Blanc or Faber-Castell fountain pen flavors of the month. And no, this is not my first Quebeco sport. A few years ago, an Inquiring Minds fan, James Times, sent me three Quebeco sports. Actually, three and a half Quebeco sports. I put together parts that I liked into one sport and gave two away to viewers. Overall, the pen is very short when capped, around four inches in length, and very light at 11 and a half grams without the clip. This one is a very lightweight, transparent, injection molded plastic in this lovely violet purple color called Royal Amethyst. From the top, we see a gold medallion embedded into the domed finial with Caveco's logo of a circle divided into 120 degree sections, a pattern borrowed by license from Mercedes, I think. No, I'm just kidding. Each of the thirds of the circle contains part of the Caveco name, which is derived from Cook, Weber and Company, K-A-W-E-C-O. The cap then tapers up to an eight faceted cylinder, making the end of the cap here look like a sharpened pencil. Then it tapers down again to the barrel. The cap has Caveco Sport, heat and gold foil stamped into the plastic and on the other side gold spot heat and gold foil stamped there's a step down to the barrel which is straight to a very very tiny step right there which then tapers very slightly to a knurled ring in the plastic at the very end and the very bottom of the pen says made in germany with one dot right there and this center divot which is an injection molding gate I understand there can be up to four dots here. I would assume that these are date quarter markings, but I could be wrong. The cap unscrews with one full turn to reveal a very small, in girth and length, concave section and the number five size box steel broad nib and a black plastic feed. The nib and the feed are not part of a nib assembly, but are friction fit into the section. If you need to swap nibs, just grip on the nib and the feed and pull straight out. They're fairly easy to swap in and out. The section is very thin but comfortable and the pen is way too short to write with comfortably, for me at least, and it's not designed to be written like that. The cap posts very, very deeply and securely and makes the pen a nice writable length. Posted the pen is five and one quarter inches in length. Let's take a closer look at that nib. The gold plated nib has some scroll work Germany since 1883, the Caveco logo, and B for broad stamped into it. The section unscrews to reveal the Caveco branded push-pull converter. This converter is an optional extra at $7. The nozzle of the section is very long, so the section threads are deep inside the barrel. There are no metal parts here, so you can convert this pen into an eyedropper if you wish. I would just suggest plenty of silicone grease on those threads right there and replenish that grease each time that you refill the pen. The Sport will accept standard international small cartridges. Inside the cap we see a plastic cap liner that seals the nib from evaporation. The optional $4 standard clip slides onto the cap easily, has a nice rectangular shape and since 1883 stamped into the top and it's nicely springy and usable. The optional deluxe slide-on clip is $7 and has Caveco in script and is a spade shape. On the facets of the clip, it says, since 1883, has the Caveco logo, Germany on both sides. The Caveco Sport is available in many, many, many finishes and colors. Here's what Goldspot says about this version. A Goldspot Pens exclusive, the Sport Royal Amethyst has a regal appearance with deep purple resin accented in gold appointments. This limited edition collaboration has a rich hue with a high degree of translucency to see the ink level inside the pen. Use the link in the description below to Goldspot Pens 
to purchase your limited edition Royal Amethyst Caveco Sport before they sell out. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Here's the Caveco Sport Gold Spot Pens exclusive limited edition Royal Amethyst with a Moonman RS1 titanium, a Hongdian M1 aluminum, a Lanby 2 3062 copper, and a Moonman 80S. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The Moonman RS1 doesn't come looking like that. I anodized that myself to get those colors, and you can see that video by clicking right up there. And the RS1 has a Schmidt nib. The Moonman 80 is a eh, awful little pen, but it does take Parker 45 nibs. So if you have a really good Parker 45 nib and you like the pocket size of the Moonman 80S, then that might work for you, but it's still not a very great pen. Now we'll look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM paper, and this is the limited edition Caveco Sport Royal Amethyst. Amethyst. Come on, Doug. And I have to tell you, when I first inked this pen, it wouldn't write. And let's look at the page. Here's the page when I first started writing. That whole bit right there is all scribbles with no ink. And then I dipped the nib into the moon dust. So I had a bead of ink sitting on top of that slit. And I pushed and pushed and got it to actually flow through that nib. But it still remained stubborn, as you can see here, skipping all over the place. So I kept trying to write with it, as you can see here, missing most of the downstrokes here. So I gave it the Ink Acquiring Minds patented seven strokes to inky happiness technique which opened the tines slightly. That technique is pressing down so you spread the tines without. I must note, try, don't try this at home if you're queasy. Uh, you press down on it without springing the nib seven times. So it just flexes a little bit. It opens up those tines and it writes a lot better, but I'm still getting those downstrokes missing. That is a characteristic of baby's bottom and the nib would write very, very nice and wet, and then would just dry up and not write at all, and then it would write again, and it was just random. I'm going to continue with the writing sample, but I'll perform a baby's bottom removal technique to this nib when we're done. It's not quite as much surgery as it sounds. It's actually fairly easy. So I had some time left before I had to upload this video to YouTube. So I thought I'd do the baby's bottom technique on this broad nib and see if I can get it writing nicely for you. So I'm going to go through my micro mesh from, from 1500 through to 12,000 grit. And on each one, I'm going to drop just a bit of water. There is ink in this pen. And then I'm just going to give it eight figure eights this way, figure eights that way, circles, circles, and some down strokes. Don't overdo it at this course stage because you're taking a lot more material off than you are at the upper stages. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then a couple circles. Then we'll move up to the next grit and so on. Before I get to 8,000 and 12,000 grit, I'm just going to try it. Put some ink down through that feed. Yep, I'm not losing any of those top strokes now. Now it's just to polish it up with 8,000 and then 12,000. 
then at this point I'll roll it over and do a few circles on the back side so that when I turn it over it will be smooth as well. And just roll the edges over on the very smooth micro mesh just to polish out any rough edges. And now let's give that a try. Very, very smooth. Still very, very wet. And it's a lot thicker as well. I was only getting 0 0.6 out of it before. I bet you this is clear, closer to 0 0.7 now. But specifically, those downstrokes are pretty solid. There you go. Elapsed time, 7 minutes and 50 seconds. But let's continue where we left off. Let's check the wetness. As I said, it got very, very wet when I performed that 7 strokes. And the nib is extremely smooth. And juicy. This is juicy. <laughs> when it writes. Having baby's bottom on a broad nib isn't that unusual, and it seems to be particularly usual with the Caveco broad nibs, as I've seen quite a few posts about it on Reddit. I don't know exactly why it shows up more with nibs that have more tipping material on them, but it seems they tend to get over-polished. If you over-polish a nib tip, the inside edges of the... I'm going to dry it bigger. Here's the nib, end on, there's the slit. This inside edge right here, in both directions, can get over-polished. And it ends up looking like, you guessed it, a baby's bottom. And so, when it touches the page, there's a gap right there that keeps the ink from flowing. The technique to remove the baby's bottom just flattens that out so that it looks like this rather than that. And it just takes a full set of micromesh pads, which is a good investment if you're collecting a lot of pens. It's an easy 10 minute fix. Let's continue with this nib. As for line variation, it's already fairly thick, so you're not getting a lot of line variation and there isn't a lot of balance to that nib. And the line the nib makes when it's writing is 0 0.6 millimeters, which is a Western medium or a Japanese medium to broad on my Richard Bender line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below. I'm all upside down with this writing sample. The ink is an ink I purchased specifically for this color pen. And it is a G Urbain Pousser de Lune. Or according to my ink salesperson, it's the Jack Herbin Pousser de Lune. Now when you translate Pousser de Lune, it translates as Moon Pussy. I actually thought that was a mashup of the Bond films Moonraker and Octopussy. I was mistaken in my translation. Pousser de Lune actually means moon dust. So it's G Urbain Pousser with an accent de goût de Lune. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing, it's pretty scratchy, very thin, and very dry. And for some quick writing, other than some skipping because of the baby's bottom, that feed is actually keeping up fairly nicely. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I'm not a big fan of pocket pens with the notable exception of my Pilot E95S which is just an absolutely gorgeous pen, elegant, full-sized when it's posted, and has a section that you can grip almost anywhere. And the capping mechanism is just sublime. But enough about the Pilot. Let's talk about the Caveco. The Caveco Sport is just a little too thin 
at the section for me, for my grip. I can grip it up a little bit further, but it's still fairly thin, even there on that barrel. It's certainly long enough and fits in my hand nicely that way. But I find that I grip a little bit too hard on it because it is so thin. And I'm not a fan of purple, but I must say this transparent royal amethyst violet purple is really becoming. And writing with this pen for the last several days has been a pleasant experience, even with the baby's bottom issue unresolved at the present time. The Caveco Sport is very reasonably priced at $30, even for the special editions, unless they are very, very limited. The Sport has a huge variety of material finishes and colors available to suit almost any taste. Plus, there's a large range of nib options as well, E, F, F, M, B, and a double broad. The nib units are available for separate purchase for around $15, but for most sport models, you'll need to pull the nib and feed from the nib unit that you get and insert them friction fit into the section. Thanks go out to Tom Odo of Gold Spot Pens for providing this pen for review. Click the link in the description below to get the special edition sale page on the Gold Spot Pens website. If you receive a 404 error, keep watching the page as it will go live at some point on Tuesday, February 27th. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. You can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comments section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, sneak peek unboxing videos, as well as instant access to my videos when I post them. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.